Hi everybody and welcome to the Bag Nine. In this episode, I'm going to be doing a golf Q&A with you, the viewers, and those of you who have subscribed. I would like to start out by thanking all of you who have viewed my prior episodes, and especially to those of you who have subscribed. I am really enjoying doing this. As you may know, I don't accept equipment from manufacturers for my reviews. I have been approached recently by three and have said no thank you. This way, I can be 100% honest giving my opinions. Right now, I'm using all my own resources for the making of the back nine. And I could really use your help in order to bring you more and better content. So please, like this video, subscribe, and if you watch any of my other videos, please give them a thumbs up as well. You're welcome to ring that bell and it'll let you know when my future episodes go up. I don't use a teleprompter. I normally use a whiteboard off camera with bullet points. And then if I have stats to give you, I jot them down. For this Q&A, I thought it'd be a little bit more casual if I just jotted down my questions, my answers, and let's see how that goes. If we don't like it, I can always go back to the whiteboard. So. I'm going to ask you some questions and give you my answers. I look forward to your answers in the comments section below. And maybe we can even have a chat about these questions and answers. Please feel free to post new questions, maybe ones I didn't cover that you'd like answered, in the comments section below. I read them all and will comment back. So let's start the questions. Number one. What are your top three courses that you have played? Mine are in this order. Number three is Caves Valley outside Baltimore, Maryland. This is a really special course. It was built to host tournaments. It did host a senior US Open. Not a lot of people know of this course, but it's really, really spectacular. Every hole is different. No two holes are alike. You use every shot in the bag. And it is in spectacular shape. The last time I played there, they required you to wear long pants. And it was 98 degrees and 100% humidity. And we walked it with a caddy. I hope they've changed that rule since. Number two is Pebble Beach. The history, the views, and the challenge. It too was also in perfect shape when I played it. My number one favorite course that I've played, and I've played a lot of courses all over the world, is Steve Wynn's Shadow Creek in Las Vegas. I tend to like desert courses. This course is a desert course that's partially in the mountains. It's spectacular. The views are gorgeous. The holes are gorgeous. Again, every hole is different. It's just a special course to play. And it too was in perfect shape when I played it. What course would you say is the hardest you've played? My answer is easy. Riviera Country Club in Los Angeles. There's a couple reasons, but the main one is the rough. It's called Kokoya grass, and it's like a Brillo pad. It's intertwined like this, forms a mesh. It's extremely hard to get out of. If you have a long shot, it's next to impossible. Most times, you have to wind up chipping back into the fairway. Now, I've watched the pros play it, and some of them are powerful enough to get out of this stuff. I wasn't. It's also long, and it's a really challenging course with very challenging greens. Number three, what's your favorite piece of new equipment? My answer is easy. 
It's my new driver, the Cobra Speed Zone Extreme. And I also have an O-band shaft in it that I was fitted for. This driver is my favorite for two reasons. First, it's long for me, longer than my F9 from last year. Anywhere I hit it on the face, I still get good distance out of it. But more importantly, it is the most forgiving driver I've ever hit. Now, I currently own a Ping G410 Plus, which at the time I got it, I would say that was the most forgiving driver I've hit. But believe it or not, the Cobra is even more forgiving. Question number four. What annoys you the most about a course? For me, it's inconsistent green speed-wise and traps that haven't been maintained in a while. And the way you can tell is there's very little sand and a lot of dirt. Also, some layouts are just too tricked out for me. Kind of silly. I don't enjoy them and I tend to never go back. Question number five, do you have a favorite golf ball or does it not really matter to you? I know several players who take great pride in playing balls they've found. Now for me, normally when I find a ball I really like, I stick with it. And right now, that's the new tailor-made tour response. It's also cheaper than the premium balls. This ball ticks all the boxes for me. Question number six, are you a blade putter or a mallet putter? For me, I have an arc in my putting stroke, so mallet putters work better for me. I also tend to find them more forgiving. Question number seven, how many wedges do you carry? I carry three besides my normal pitching wedge. I carry a 50 degree wedge with 10 degrees of bounce. I carry a 56 degree wedge with 14 degrees of bounce. And I carry a 60 degree wedge with 10 degrees of bounce. Now I tend to be a picker or a sweeper. I don't take big divots. So for my 50 and 60, I don't want a lot of bounce because the bounce could make me hit them fat. So I like less bounce, so I pick them clean off the turf. With my 56 degree wedge, I need that bounce to help me get out of sand traps. Question number eight. How do you feel about the new rule regarding leaving the flag stick in? Now, before COVID, this was an option to the player. You could leave it in or pull it or have it tended. Since COVID, most every course I've played has required players not to touch the flag. Now, I like this rule because I find on 10 and 12 feet putts and longer, I tend to focus on the flag stick more than the hole. For some reason, this just helps me with my aim better. Also, I find sometimes if I hit a putt too hard, the flag stick will help me. Question number nine, this one you might find silly, but what annoys you the most about a playing partner, whether you know them or not? My number one is someone who's always on their cell phone, calls, texting, and emails. Someone always seems to have to tell them, hey, you're up. Also, they tend not to pay attention when other people are hitting, which can sometimes be a problem. My number two, of course, is the same as a lot of you, is slow play. A player in my group or players in front of me. So my number three are players who tend to drive way ahead of me, almost up to the green, before I've even hit. For example, let's say I'm the third or the longest drive on a particular hole. The players who have already hit behind me will tend to drive up in front of me and I find it annoying. Sometimes I have to worry about hitting them because they're close to the green or not too far right or too far left. And I have to yell for or watch out or something before I hit. I just think this is inconsiderate. And golf courtesy dictates that you wait till someone hits before you move in front of them. 
Question number 10. What do you like most about playing golf? For my answers, keep in mind I'm 61 years old with two really bad knees. Currently I'm playing at a 13 handicap. Number one for me is just being outside, outdoors for two to five hours. I focus on my game and chatting with my friends or new people that I've met and got paired with. It's an escape for me. I don't think about what's going on in the world or what's on the news. I just find it very relaxing. Number two for me is the social aspect. I really enjoy being able to be with my friends for an extended period of time, catching up with them and chatting. I also really enjoy meeting new people on the course. Number three for me is not so much my score anymore, but how I hit the ball that particular round. If I drive well and hit my irons well, I tend to score better because I'm a pretty good putter. When I was out at golf for eight years, it's all I practiced was putting. So if that all comes together, I'm really happy. Now, I like most of you can scramble, hit a bad shot, hit a good recovery, chip up and get a par. But I just don't find that as rewarding as a day when I'm consistent off the tee and consistent with my irons. 